Back on in five. Oh, man. I hope the AMPTP agrees to the IATS demands. IATS, I-A-T-S-E, is a guild in America who represents a lot of the behind the camera crew. So we're talking lighting, grips, hair and makeup, soundies, a lot of those folks are represented. Basically the people who are the backbone of the film and television industry. Without them there would be no Hollywood movies, there'd be no Netflix, no Hulu, none of that. These film workers are being worked to the bone. Sometimes when I'm talking to my non-film friends about my job, I realize how much we just take for granted as normal in the film industry and my non-film friends are shocked and appalled. <laughs> you know, my worst day this year was uh, we were on the shoot, it was six day weeks uh, for six weeks. The days were for me in the camera department, 12 to 15 hour days and there was one day we had broken turnaround so there was about nine hours between when we finished the night before and when I got called back the next morning and then we worked a 15 hour day and driving home that night I started micro napping behind the wheel of this van and I had to pull over and really wake myself up to be able to drive the 10 minutes back to the hotel room the really messed up thing was that also in the van with me was our 19 year old camera assistant, our camera trainee, and it was like her second job out of film school or something. And I think about, you know, I could have fallen asleep at the wheel and killed us both. And this isn't to be dramatic, this happens in the film industry. That's the reason IATS is striking, is because they're demanding adequate rest time. The fight is for two-day weekends and shorter work days. Every single film day I've worked in the last few years has been 12 to 16 hours. That's really standard for me and I'm reading about people who are running longer. There was a guild vote that got approved this morning. 98% of the guild voted in approval of this strike. Let me just read some of the stories of some of the guild members. You can read them all on IA underscore stories on Instagram. But here is why they're striking. I'm an assistant costume designer in Local 892. Here's a recent experience. My workday began at 6am to fit 20 actors who were cast the night before they had to shoot. Then the rest of the crew came in at 9am and the shoot began. It went on until 10pm. And after collecting all of the actors' clothes, I was able to leave around 11pm. I was expected back at 6am the next morning to do it all again. After three days of this gruelling schedule, I almost wrecked my car on the freeway driving home because I was so exhausted. We IATS members deserve to be treated like human being. We don't want to die for someone else's greed. Hashtag IATSE solidarity. Here's a picture of my brother's car after an overnight, coming back home from upstate to Long Island, less than 20 minutes away from home. The cops showed up to the scene and said he shouldn't be alive. Thankfully, I still have my brother here with me today, but I know some people who are less fortunate. We need to do better. I'm the daughter of a key grip. I spent most of my childhood never seeing my dad. I can... Fuck, man. I need to take a moment, actually. I've been in this industry for 10 years, and it's been so hard and oftentimes I bring stuff like this up to other crew and I get this pushback that like it's just the way it is if it's too hard quit and get another job the only other industry I know that has these kind of problems is uh, like hospital and the medical industry people shouldn't be risking their lives driving home after 15 16 17 hour days I'm feeling really validated actually reading all of these <laughs> like I've been on the verge of quitting the industry this year because of these shoots I did six days a week 12 to 16 hour days for six weeks in a row and I was so wrecked afterwards just a complete shell of myself I didn't see any of my friends or family the film was my life we literally do suffer for the art but we shouldn't like we don't need to I no longer work in the States. I'm now based in Tamaki Makoto in Aotearoa, New Zealand. 
but we have the same problems here. The IATS is demanding adequate meal breaks, uh, vacation pay, <laughs> increased turnaround time, new media, which was this concept when streaming services first came out, was that they weren't sure if it was going to be a success or not, so new media didn't have to pay filmmakers as much, uh, the tech crew as much, because they weren't sure it was going to be a hit, right? But now it's very clear that streaming services are a massive hit. You know, uh, Netflix is this huge company, like millions and millions of members all around the world. But the pay standards are still such that new media, i.e. streaming services, which is not new media anymore, doesn't have to pay as much as standard television or feature films. I, I mean, IATS is literally just demanding adequate rest. Daughter of a key grip here. I spent most of my childhood never seeing my dad. I had convinced myself that he was Batman because he's, he was always gone at night. He drove a special truck to work. He had his own cell phone way before that was a thing. And he was the strongest person I knew. He wasn't a superhero though. He was a worn out man who was never around. My parents constantly fought when he was home about his next job and how long he'd be away. My mum felt like a single mum. Then before we knew it, he was home all the time because the job wore his body out so bad. By 45 years old, he, has his, he had his first spinal surgery and a heart attack from the cocaine that he was using to keep him working the 15 plus hours a day. He's been retired now for almost as long as he was working. His body is so beat up that he's had two knee replacements, his entire spine is fused, and he has a new hip. I stand in solidarity with all of those who want to make the industry a safer place. It's much needed. I'm hearing quite a few keys or people in positions of power say, this is what it takes. I had to do this and I busted my ass to get where I am. This narrative has to change. Just because I used to work 18 to 20 hours a day as a PA does not make it right today. We should be trying to change things. We should expect better and not expect others to ensure abuse like we have. That is what real leadership looks like. My husband and I were together a long time before we got into the industry. When he first started, he was away from home nine plus months a year. Every time he'd come back an exhausted shell of a man, I'd never seen anything like it. He seldom felt up to doing many of the things he used to enjoy. Eventually, we moved from our home state so we could be where he was at work and live together again. And he's still gone working 70 hours a week and working jobs out of town. The saddest part for me is that the industry caused him to change his mind about having kids. When would he have the time for them when he doesn't have time for anything else? Not even doctor's appointments or weddings or funerals or visiting family or vacations. I adore my husband. He's a good man and I'm incredibly proud of what he's accomplished. But... I also regret not having kids. I miss the life we had before. I didn't know how drastically everything would change. I had no idea an industry like this existed. It's night and day. A normal 40 hour a week work is like a part time job for a film worker. I hate seeing the toll it takes on his body and mental health. He deserves to be treated like a human being where he can take bathroom breaks and stop to eat lunch and leave work when he's vomiting and sleep for eight hours and see his family and attend a funeral. I wish he'd picked almost any other career. I would never wish the kind of life on anyone who wants to see their family or have kids or values their health. I discourage people from getting in the industry or dating someone in it. And that's really sad. I mean, there are hundreds of stories like this on this Instagram page. This is the most recent one. My boss told us that we'll be working 14 hours, seven days a week until further notice. They're trying to push as much work as possible before we start the strike. What a giant fuck you to all the crew members. Several productions are doing this, and I'm sure more will follow in the coming days. This is why filmies are striking. Someone posted on the IATS stories Instagram page that a lot of these drowsy driving accidents where people die have no skid marks, which means the brakes weren't engaged, which means they were fully asleep at the wheel. There's this thing called continuous hours or French hours where they just don't give you a lunch break. Legally, you're meant to have a lunch break, but then if they just write in continuous hours into your contract, then they can just not do that. So they, I did two continuous hours days on this shoot recently uh, where they just brought the food around to people and handed it to them. Here's your lunch. Eat this while you keep working. Here's a letter from the local 600 in the States. 
We are Local 600, directors of photography who are writing to express our ongoing concern about the hazards of unsafe working hours, a practice that continues despite all the medical and indisputable evidence of the harm caused by fatigue. Most notable are the numerous car accidents our colleagues have suffered in recent years, including the weekend before we entered into these negotiations. This past year has shown that when employers and craftspeople work together to confront a worldwide safety threat, it is possible to both protect everyone on our sets and successfully complete the most ambitious projects. It is past time to use that same intelligence and resources that have proven to be available to increase daily rest periods and implement weekend rest periods to ensure the physical and mental health of every member of the crew. The time to create meaningful change is now. And this has been signed by what looks like a hundred ASC members. If you want to stand in solidarity with film workers, the people who bring you your favorite TV shows and movies, the people who create the films and television and streaming media that you love to consume. If you want to support us, here are some things you can do. Right now, go and cancel your Netflix subscription, cancel your Amazon Prime Video subscription, and put in the box that asks why I stand in solidarity with IATSE. Retweet what the IATS is demanding. Follow IA underscore stories on Instagram and share that with your friends. Share this video, tell people. I just don't think that people outside of the film industry understand the labor conditions of the film industry. Other than people who work in hospitals, nurses, medical staff, I don't know any other industry in, in America, in New Zealand, in Australia who is treated in this way. I hope you now have a better understanding of why IATS is striking, why filmmakers are striking in the States, and why people are cancelling their Netflix subscriptions, cancelling their Amazon Prime subscriptions, until filmmakers are given adequate work conditions, adequate rest periods, two-day weekends, adequate turnaround, and when filmmakers behind the cameras, the backbone of the film and television industries, are given the treatment <laughs> that human beings deserve.